I think, yeah, I've played uh, Magic for a long time and had a lot of success in Magic, so managed to temper my ego a bit with that. <laughs> no, no, that's all cool. So um, if people were just wondering, um, we just kicked us all in and I accidentally had it just on mute. So I just said to Rob, what's it like being an absolute winner? And um, you, you used to play a lot of um, Magic the Gathering back in the day, didn't you? Yeah, for, I mean, it, it died a death, the competitive scene for Magic over COVID. Um, but prior to that, I played it for 12 years competitively. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Where did, where did that get you? I uh, played on six Pro Tours um, and won some holidays. Um, for people who know, there's a uh, store down south called Axion, and they, run a they used to run a bunch of tournaments where you could win holidays. So I went to Australia with that, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, mostly in America. Oh, sweet. So you were spent. You basically had a an awesome success <laughs> in America playing Magic the Gathering. Was it like a standard or modern or...? Mix of everything, really, because it was whatever the Pro Tour was, but um, the Axion events were all modern, uh, so that's where I cut my teeth, really, I guess. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. So, Taryn Titan says, great work on the weekend. What's that, sorry? Uh, Taryn Titan in the chat. This has said, uh, great work on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I felt awful, like, from Saturday night onwards, because obviously getting up, <laughs> I got back at, like... Well, after beating me... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saturday was playing Flesh and Blood for however many hours, like nine hours or whatever it was. Yeah. Driving 300 miles, coming home, and then getting up after not sleeping in the, for more than five hours and driving to Durham to play again. So, uh, where, yeah, if you don't, whereabouts in the UK do you live? Because I saw Durham and I was like, oh, yeah, dude, that's, that's nowhere near. <laughs> that's nowhere near where I live. So, for anyone who knows where Living Realms is in Castleford, uh, I live in Leeds. Okay. It's the biggest major city near Castleford. Um, so, yeah, it was a long way south for Northampton and then a long way north for Durham. Oh, days, man. Well, okay. Well, if anyone didn't know, Rob Catton here is uh, a bit of a. Well, he's not losing anything at this point. So, you went to the ProQuest. Which was on day two on in the, during the nationals, um, because I take it you 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 jumped into the game and uh, just missed out on the cut to get into nationals. I take it. <laughs> I don't. Um, so I started doing like my first event was Tales of Aria pre-release. And that's oh first, right. <laughs> that's like one of the first games I played. Um, so when I heard that the pro quest on the yeah the Sunday of the uh, of nationals was limited, I was like awesome because I don't really have a good deck right now i have some blitz decks like yeah. some, you know the pre-cons and stuff like that but um yeah so that's where i was at all right fantastic and then you just jumped into the pro quest and and, and win that and you're like all right cool this that's, that's awesome and then um we had a kingdom gaming uh invite which is um, a community ran event by uh kingdom gaming uh from adam it was pretty good good um good turnout as well so it was a good you know it, it, it was it was a sizable event to take notice, right? Of um, of 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 the performance, and you win that. <laughs> I was like, all yeah. right, okay. And now, yeah, so... oh, go, on. go on. No, 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 you go on. <laughs> um, yeah, I was gonna say as well. Um, yeah, it was just a really fun event because it was all the split format and the draft and all that stuff. It was really good. Yeah, yeah the, I liked that they um did the multi draft format where there was like some some people have monarch, some people had arcane, some have welcome to wraith. That was a really cool idea. Yeah, I drafted Monarch. Um, ah. And I was tempted, obviously, by drafting Chain, but it scared me a bit with the whole yeah. banished stuff. So I was like, oh, I, <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing here, so I'll go with this a bit of a safer option. I went. I drafted Prism. Yeah, I thought, you were gonna, <laughs> I thought you were going to say Prism. I thought, hmm, what's a safe bet? Prism. Yeah, pick Prism. <laughs> and then um, this weekend, we had the ProQuest season just kicked off. And again, Kingdom Gaming was one of the first to um, have it. There was also one in Southampton as well. But uh, yeah, Rob came over to Kingdom Gaming and uh, lo and behold, he wins that one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and I had the pleasure of meeting Rob. Uh, we, I saw him at Kingdom Gaming Invite. And again, we met up at uh, Kingdom Gaming The ProQuest. And uh, we actually had a game together, which was awesome. One of the um, highlight games that I had because it was generally quite a tight game. 
Um, uh, but unfortunately, I did lose uh, with. Oh, I think you, you, the, the doom clock was ticking for you, but it was like you had to close it or it was it. And to be honest, it was. It, I think I was on like nine health, and you, it was. It was looking good. I can see your hand, and basically the banishes. Well, it was pretty good, and I was like, oh no, I think that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I was on one life with a carrion husk, so I've got to win the game there. Yeah, yeah I know it was it was it was a fantastic game, and then uh, yeah, just apps, and then you went over to Durham to build a card trade, uh, build a card game trader, and how was that for you? Because well, technically, technically, you didn't win that, but the final was I think it was like, did you play out the final? No, um, it was a yeah, it was a it was real successful for me and my friends that went because of the four of us in the car that drove there. All four of us made top eight, which was oh, obviously really cool. That's um, that's awesome. And um, yeah, so I had to unfortunately play against one of my friends in the semi-finals who was playing Prism. Um, and yeah, it's a bit awkward because obviously I'm just there for value at that point. I'm just there for the gold foil. Um, and yeah, just a bit of an awkward situation, obviously, but um, that's what I'm there for at the end of the day. And yeah, you did. and yeah, in, in the other semi-finals, my friend Matt, who was playing the same exact deck list as me, every to the card was um, playing. Yeah, he was playing in the semi-finals, and I was just hoping that he could win because whoever gets in the finals with me gets the slot, no matter what the outcome. So, yes. Yeah. But it turned out to be uh, I can't. Well, I'm not sure what the chap's name was. Was was he playing Bolton though? Yeah, a guy called Kashi. Ah, um, okay. Sabres Bolton. Uh, Sabres Bolton. Yeah. Um, it was his first. So I played him in the Swiss, and it was his first time playing against Chain um, with Bolton, and right. he didn't really know um, how to approach the matchup. So he tried he tried to be defensive to like build up his soul before he went for it. And basically, I think we'll get to this obviously when we start going through the deck yeah. um, and the matchups and stuff. But I think the only deck that can defensively keep Chain out. As in, keep you know, not die, um, is Oldham. Yeah. Um, the, and yeah, we'll we'll get to that matchup in a bit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because he would try to get go, go defensive. Like every turn is just like you le you leak four damage, then you leak five damage, and before you know it, I've still got this Karen Huskin player. Yeah. yeah. So hard to kill me from that. So um, Eddie Rue in the chat has just said, "Are you less inclined to go to the next few qualifiers?" <laughs> it's interesting that they've asked that because um so me and my girlfriend my girlfriend plays as well uh, i think you oh, might, fantastic. Her, you might have seen her at the invitational oh um, was she in the top eight yeah she was she was playing oh, Katsu. Sick. yeah so i didn't get a chance to see, I, I saw her but i didn't talk but yeah cool yeah um so she's booked to go to a couple of the pro quests but the problem is we've got a dog um so right. we we don't want to like leave the dog at home all day when we both go out and play and stuff like that. Right. Um, so you'll to... babysitting the dog. <laughs> well, this weekend I was meant to play EH Gaming and then uh, I think it's Derby on the Sunday, Bards and Swords, I think it is. Yeah. Um, and I was like, why don't I look after the dog on Saturday and you can go play the Pro Quest? So I'm, I'm giving up one of them because I'm just like, eh, I don't, re I don't really yeah. need to play with her, and it's nice for her to go do that. So yeah, I, I, so I'm, I'm putting less on myself, and it's also. <sighs> This Thanks. might sound a yeah. little bit. No, 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 go, just say it. <laughs> this might sound a little bit big headed, but it's, I, there's also a factor of it. It's a bit easy for my friends as well because if I'm not there, like knocking them out of top eight and stuff like that, then they get. No, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not. You know, if if you are gonna go in, you're clearly you know one of the uh, the more rep player for a particular deck, and you're more comfortable in the field. Yeah, you know, it does kind of suck. <laughs> You go, sorry, mate. Yoink. Although yeah. you could, you could just go on your go, sir. But I, that, that's the winner in you. The winner is like, I'm here for the gold foil. <laughs> I don't blame you, man. Simon and Trip will do the same to me. I'll be like, come on, guys, please. I've got to. It's, it's the only way I can get into the pro tour. And they're like, see ya. <laughs> so if Ben, so one of my friend who was playing this deck, um, if I would have played against him in the semi-finals, yeah. I would have offered him what I offered him when I got paired. So I got paired against him in round one. Yeah. And I offered him um, the seventy. I offered him a seventy-five twenty-five split. Um, so seventy-five percent to me and twenty-five percent to him. Yeah. And he, 
if he would have taken, he knew that if he if he would have taken that, I would have just conceded um, because I I I believe in this deck so much that I'm just like, you know, I think he's got a really good chance of winning it. And yeah. um, he said no. He said no, and then I beat him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like no. Oh, well, <laughs> boo! Get out of the way. Anyway, so. People are here to uh, ask a little bit about this chain deck, um, and since you've been get you know had a lot of success with this deck, let's break this down to um, you know to, so people can probably look at this and think hey, you know what this is really cool. Uh, I might want to take this to my pro quest or an armory or whatever, right? Because it's clearly mm-hmm. doing really well now. If you have played Flesh and Blood before, there's probably going to be a couple of things in here that you're like, yeah, I've seen this before. This is chain. But if you're curious as to maybe some of the new tech, um, what Rob's got in mind for you know particular cards for particular matchups, you know we've got Bra- we've got Starvo now. <laughs> it's a completely different world with where we was with Chain before Everfest. So let's. Uh, to me, I think it, the easiest thing to do is to just run through the very easy, easy you know, easy cards that was clearly going to be in the deck, and I'll. You know, this is the ones that I can clearly see that show up in every single one. So, starting with the reds, bounding demigon reds, obviously. Mm-hmm. Ghostly visit, obviously. Howl from beyond, rift binds, shadow puppetry, unhallowed rites, and soul reaping. Well, when you sent me the debt list over, I didn't even know what your sideboard was. <laughs> but I just went, they're clearly in the main deck because they're blood debt. They're good value and they hit hard. Is that about right? Yeah, that's the bread and butter of the deck. Um, yeah, and that's yeah, that's very much the core. Yeah, yeah. smash him. So um, you, we'll go, we'll go down the. We'll mention belittle. So the belittle um, gets fetching minimisms. Good value, right? Even more so than that, I would say it's probably the second best deck card in the deck. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think the best card in the deck is? You scroll down a little bit further. Yeah. Oh, it's Art of War. <laughs> yeah. Of course it's Art of War. Obviously, silly me. Oh, yeah, and Art of War is the main one to go in the deck. So you think Belittle is the best card in... Well, the second best card in the deck. Why is that? The start of all of... The start of your best turns are with Art of War. And this, and if you don't have an Art of War, the start of your best turns are with Belittle. Um, it's to find resources. It's, yeah, so it's, it's 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 everything you need it to be. So like, if you need it, if you need more resources because you're going really wide this turn and you yeah. want to do, you know, health from beyond costs quite a lot of resources and things like that. So mm. the thing about chain is that you have access to play lots of cards, but you are constrained on go again or you're constrained on resources so having access to go get another blue to go up to like six or even nine resources and if you're playing ether iron weave even 11 resources is sometimes what you need um yes. and be able to go get a minuism in a pinch is really good it turns hands where you've got nothing but attacks it turns that into having the non attack non attack which is crucial because not only does it turn on your rosetta thorn but um, Bounding Demigon and Unhallowed Rites, you can only play them from Banish if you've played a non-attack, so unlocking them is just absolutely crucial. Yeah. There's so much. There's even the thing that... Sorry, I am... No, <laughs> no, 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 go. No, you go. That's what we're here for. One of the biggest matchups, obviously, is Prism. Uh, it's gonna, it's, it won the progress in Southampton. It got to the finals with the one in Nottingham, I think. Yeah. Um, and Matt Falk's won with Prism as well. Um, yeah, exactly. And, um, whatever, wherever that was. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where that was. And it's, it's even been doing really well in New Zealand as well. They've just been absolutely yeah. smashing it there. So it's huge as well because against Prism, um, we'll come to Spellbound Creepers in a... I guess we'll talk about Spellbound Creepers now. Which, Go for it. Um, starting your turn with an attack with Go again is absolutely crucial into Art Like Sentinel. Yeah. Um, because Spellbound Creepers you can only use if you've attacked and if you... If they play an app, if they have an outlet sent them out and you say you go like shackle and they go response ALS. Yeah. You attack the ALS and pop it, Spellbound Creeper says, No, oh, you haven't you haven't attacked. So yes. you can't use So that means you can't get your action point back. If you start your turn with a belittle, first thing, belittle, 
and then they play ALS, you've attacked, which is absolutely crucial. So having something to start your turns against them is really big. That's a really, uh, so yeah. that's, that's a really good. That's a good. That's a good point there. So, um, okay, we'll move. So, and also the mannerisms as well. That you've explained a bit about that. Flock of the Feather Walkers. What's so this one? Yeah, is sometimes when you first start playing the deck, you're like, this card is crap. Like, I can't play it half the time. Mm -hmm. If I can't give it go again, what's the point? Because I'm just going to get a quick and tackle for the next turn, and often you want to end with Thorn, so like it's just really awkward. It only blocks two, but so it does require a little bit of work. But it's unbelievable the reward you get when you get to do it. So yeah. things like it'll be the reason why you do stuff like Art of War, giving go again rather than pumping. But yeah, if you can do stuff like um, it's one of the part part of the reasons why we're playing. Um, red captains call them to the like red mouth skies yeah. or, or yellow mouth skies because having um them plus the yellow captains calls plus the shadow puppetries able to give flock of the feather walkers go again and then you can come in with like a command and conquer with go again or something or, or even another flock with go again and really stacking up it's it's really it, yeah. yeah when you get it going it's really good yeah so captain's call really pushes that spellbound creepers as well in a pinch can some you know can extend that even further as well by but you know play flock of the feather walkers creepers the captain's cool give that go again and now your next attack has got to go again on top of that and yeah and even shackled you know you have to be careful though because if you creepers a captain's call after a flock you'd have the captain's call on the quick and turk and both giving them the next thing go again well, so this is plus, where... let's just pick the plus two then yeah <laughs> yeah that's true. yeah but that's it's a it's a big thing about the deck is sequencing is like unbelievably important which is a good good point to bring up to be fair yeah. um well there you go that's so, it. that shows to how much of i didn't even think of that but it was you know what i mean it, it just takes one of those yeah. uh one of those um you got to rep it i think that's a, it's effectively a really big rune blade thing. rune blade is all about sequencing because it's asking for the non-attacks and the attacks and you've got to put this into that and creepers is a fantastic card to help train you to know about sequencing even more the second you've got that that down you're rolling now uh okay i'm gonna go into your we'll go into captain's call it's pretty i feel like it's pretty it's just obvious what this is doing um it's just it's just extending everything further just like we expect with spellbound creepers except you're really cheeky you can just give you a plus two it's just i think it's a bit unfair yeah, so basically when Plunder Run got banned, because it played three reds, three blues, um, yeah. something needed to fill that gap. Um, the deck was already playing the three yellow captains call and one blue. Yeah. Um, so we're considering things like, uh, like I mentioned, Mouse Guys. Um, yeah. I think, what were the options were? I think it was mainly Mouse Guys. Um, Lead the Charge. Like, Lead the Charge, yeah. Sting of Sorcery is another one. Um, mm. But not giving go again it's quite anemic sometimes this uh sting of sorcery um yeah we settled on captain's call because like the red one gives command and conquer go again which is a pretty sick player to be yeah 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 that's make makes that really awkward card even more even more worse okay cool and bounding demagons the yellows and the blues i think well the blues are kind of obvious really but is that was bounding demagon kind of a hard card well it wasn't the red one was it a bit of a hard card to consider putting in because of how low the damage is when it gets banished? And it's like one of the, it's gonna it's gonna be one of the worst cards to see in the, ban the banished zone, the blue one especially. It is disappointing when you yeah you're looking for a, a nice high damage turn and all you've got is a blue banning from banish. But to me, um, a blue block three never needs to do much to be good um, because. If you're playing in blue because you need blues to play, play all your cards and it blocks three so that's like right if you do anything on top of this like that's remotely useful you're good mm -hmm. similar to stuff like tri shot in in um like in uh, ranger it's just like it doesn't really do a right lot but it's a blue block three so it doesn't really need to do much um and density of blood debt is really important for cards like eclipse as well um yeah that's true do you met did you ever get the eclipse to fire yeah, you do it every game against Holden. Um Yeah, I suppose against Holden. Yeah. 
Okay. But... That's the only map really where you want it, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Um, I'm going to go and ask about this one. Revel in Moonblood. Now, one. I I was I was ex I was thinking, come on, man, it's gonna be three in here, but you went with one. Why is that? So, first time I tried it, I was like, I'm just gonna try one because my sense is that so chain does chain wants consistency. Chain wants to do the same thing every single turn because his average turn is non attack, probably giving go again, attack for three or four, shackle, attack for three or four. Rosetta Thorn. So that's like a 10 to 12 damage turn. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got spare resources, you can chuck a, a rune chant in there. If you've you know flipped over a howl or whatever, you got a bit bigger. If, again, cards stack on top to make this bigger and bigger. So on average, 10 to 12 damage turn. And that's just what you want to keep that consistency. And if you, because you need the non-attack every single turn to make the Thorn do what it's meant to do and get be able to play the Bounty Demigons and then Haldorites from Banish. So you need the non-attack. I don't want to ever play a non-attack and it not do anything. Um, so, for right. example, if my own non-attack was Reveling Runeblood in the hand, or if I've got two, it's a bit awkward because the first one's not going to do anything. Oh, you could you could always do the Cheeky Creepers trick. Where yeah, you, you play it and then you can Creepers in the second one, which then recognises that you've played the first one, so then you get ten rune chants. Oh no, sorry, eight. I'm thinking yeah. Viserai. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah. nine even. So, no, is it? I don't know. Anyway, so yeah. yeah. That's true. So, um, you could just, if you've got two, you're like, oh, mate, that's, that's eight damage. <laughs> yeah, it's it's room as well. Um, mm. Like, I don't really, everything else just feels so crucial to me because, like I said, I, I don't want to go into the captain's calls because again is just so crucial in the deck um, and clearing out your blood debt is not only part of a massive part of your offense but when you play a bounding demogon out of your or whatever out of your blood debt which you um i'll put this so like yeah sometimes i play a bounding demogon as my last attack out of blood debt rather than attacking with thorn for two and two because it also gains me a life functionally because if i lift the bounding demogon there that's at least one life. Maybe next turn I'm not attacking. That could be another. Or I don't have a non-attack. You know, it's going to be more life. Yeah. Um, so having like the go again to be able to get things out of my blood debt is really crucial. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair enough. Fair enough. I'm just I'm the question man. <laughs> so we'll, we'll most art of war. Yeah, whatever. We know that. Right. We're going to go down <laughs> to the blues. Shadow Versa. Yeah, of course. Vex in Malice. Yeah, it's a good card. I tell you what. This is my my motto is Vex in Malice wins you the game. Yeah, it's so like I said about blue block three, he's not needing to do much. Yeah, it's, this has like secret things it does, like it also reveals for Minoism, it also reveals for Flock of the Featherwalkers. Oh, so it, it yeah. just fits, fits everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sky's Blue, just to extend that even further, plus it's great. Sky's Blue is great. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't leave home without one. Uh, yeah, exactly. all gone. No, no, not good. Now, Shrill of the Skull form. That has got to be the new... That's the new hottest Runeblade Blue on the market right now. And you've only went for two. Oh, man. Go. Why, the why previous list... Yeah, the previous list were playing two blue Flock of the Featherwalkers because they were mm. blues which can reveal for Minimism because um, keeping that density up is really important. Um, so having... This is just a better version, basically, because it's it's better to play than the, yeah. uh, the block. Um, it blocks three as well, so yeah, yeah. easy to see. So you've got like one copy of Unhallowed Rights Blue. So to me, my brain just goes into let's make that a third copy of Shrill, or is that something to do with the blood debt? That well, that card is part of the Ursa package, basically, and the Eclipse package. Oh, um, okay, sure. So some of these things I'm not going to claim to be my own ideas. So things like the the one yellow bounding the and the unhallowed rights, the, the yellow seeping shadows. These are things from I've just I found from the list I was playing initially um, that I've kept because I like yeah this is just part of that package. Um, so that, those things could change in the future, but yeah. Okay, the one stinger sorcery. <laughs> so. When I said about cutting the three red plunders and the three blue plunders, um, yeah. 
the three red plunders became three red captain's calls easy yeah the three blue plunders we were already playing one blue captain's call so i needed an extra blue non-attack this is the best one i think um i'm not a particularly big fan of it i almost cut it for the third shrill um before the event which you might be thinking cutting a non-attack for an attack but my reasoning was if it helps me reveal to belittle more often then that yeah. I argue that's access to an extra non-attack, but yeah, it's the best blue non-attack I could think of, um, basically. And yeah, have, not a big fan of it. Have you seen the? There's there been a chain deck that was playing in New Zealand, and he runs the Talisman of Warfare in his chain deck, purely because it is the most awkward thing to deal with in the world when you've got that sitting there and you go, okay, I'm just going to swing with Rosetta and, um, well, are you going to take two arcane or are you going to take two physical? Because if you do, you lose, you're you losing your arsenal. So you have to deliberately block one arcane and take one physical damage. It's... I'm just going to have to Google what this card does. Oh, Talisman of Warfare. If you do exactly two damage, destroy all cards in arsenal. <laughs> um, it is honestly it might sound pure garbage but when it comes for chain for some reason because he's emptied his arsenal and if a source of two damage just comes from somewhere all of a sudden <laughs> most of your attacks that can come in for two like a blue bounding demigon can turn into a commanding conquer like effect out of nowhere that's actually really interesting we've also got invert existence which deals two arcane yeah um, yeah you can just you, you can threaten Arsenal at any given point, and if they don't, if you don't deal with exactly two, then well, it sticks around. <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that. I, it feels janky to me. It the does feel janky. The thing that worries me is that it can destroy your own Arsenal. I mean, I'll just use your Arsenal. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I digress. I'm throwing out some silly ideas. So this is kind of like your main deck stuff, right? Mm. Um, so let's let's talk about matchups. You got your sideboard. Let's talk about matchups. So you, who is your most um, feared matchup? But let's, uh, yeah, who is who, what's the matchup? You're like, ugh, I don't, I, don't, I hate this. You can probably guess because it's him as everybody else. Yeah, Starvo. <laughs> Starvo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're going to come up against Starvo. You got your sideboard here. What's your plan? So I'm bringing in uh, these Reek of Corruptions, which is, yeah. um, you would often not play this in draft, but um, in, <laughs> against Starvo, it's actually worth something. So the idea, um, I, most people will probably know what the idea is, but the idea is that Bravo doesn't like to block because he wants to keep his three cards in hand or how, however many cards in hand to be able to reveal to do his whole thing. Mm -hmm. If you can pull the cards out of their hand, then it makes it harder for them. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's really good because you have... Because you can go really wide, and this card doesn't have blood debt, so it's going to be in your hand or your arsenal. Um, Starva doesn't know when it's coming, so if you start your turn by doing Bounding Demigon or whatever, and they might go, oh yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna pitch this and crown or whatever, I'm going to block and something like that, thinking I'll keep these cards back, and then you go, make Shackle, Reek of Corruption, and they're like, oh, oh. now I can't do it. I can't do my turn that I was going to do. And that's how you win games, basically. Like, them little jumps of tempo can just win you a game. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, got the reeks. If you scroll down a little bit further, I think yeah, fate for scenes. So on the Saturday, I wasn't actually playing these. Um, I was playing two runic reclamation, which is the um, seven attack for three. Yeah, blood card, which is basically just a pop phantasms against prism, and actually randomly comes in in the chain mirror as well because you blow up their cell shackles. Yeah, um, but I swapped it over to fate for scenes because. Um, Runeblades have really good armor, and Chain is the best in terms of that because of the Carrion Husk. Mm -hmm. um, Fatherseen out of Arsenal plus a card from hand is seven, and that can that blocking a Spinal Crush um, plus a bit of armor if they've like plus two or something can be yeah. the difference between losing go again and not. Um, so that was basically the idea on that card. Um, sure. I actually sideboard down to 60 because I want to keep the deck as sleek as possible and I'm bringing in um, five reds. Yeah. And I cut um, the Gorg Tome because it's really awkward into channel like Frigid. Yeah. Um, 
and not blocking can be a potential problem. Uh, two unhallowed rights, I think it is. Um, oh, right, okay. What, the, the red ones? Yeah, because... Okay. Um, the idea here is that... Um, I had a really weird game against Stavo in the quarterfinals of the progress on Saturday where I forgot to make Shackle on turn one. Oh, <laughs> uh, I saw that. I sat there and thought, when I saw the final, I went, wait a minute, he's got... <laughs> Surely he should be on more short shackles than that. <laughs> yeah, and then like the next turn I made one, and then the next two turns there was a channel like Frigid in play, and I couldn't make one, and I ended up winning and being like, I wonder if there's something to that. So the idea on cutting the red on Hallowed Rights is that they're the card that can get stuck in your arsenal in Blood Debt, sorry. Right. The easiest. And they're actually not very good. One for four is just the worst ghostly visit, is the idea. And right. and it's a red, so I need to cut some reds. Okay. And I'm trying so, to remember what else I cut. So, uh, no Command and Conquers, no Eclipse, no Sleep no. in Shadows, Invert Existence. No. No, so. I think, sorry, I'm blanking a little bit here. No, I think no, don't worry. So I've, I've brought in five cards. Oh, that's it. So I only run 59 in my main deck, so I nearly need to cut four. So it's the Gorg Tome, the two unhallowed rights, and I think it's it's definitely not the Reveling Runeblood. It's, um, I think it might be Yellow Bounding, um, just because it's this random extra yeah. card. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's something like that, yeah. All right, Brill. So the Starve matchup, you'll take a tight 60 deck, and the bat and the plan behind it is is just the chain. <laughs> Yeah, race as fast as you can. Yeah. Um, God, you're going first. Um, one of the ways I lost round one on the Saturday, <laughs> and the way that I lost was I went second against Stavo. He dominated a crippling, uh, a spinal crush on the first turn. Uh... Which is by, far, <laughs> by far the worst thing because if it's a crippling crush and you discard cards, you're like, oh, I'll just draw back up. Yeah. If it's an open hold, you discard cards, you just draw back up. If it's spinal crush and you lose go again you are screwed because your, your first end is just going to be nothing. My first end was Shackle Go, um, which is just unbelievable. Um, yeah, I, that doesn't sound good at all. So, yeah. Oh, we had uh, Chunks and Jason Hamer just come and say hi. Congratulations on, on winning. We're just talking about uh, the Starvo matchup, guys. So um, if any of you Starvo players think you can rock up to the tournament with um, Rob here bringing this, you know, just beware, because uh, you know he's. Apart from that first one, if you spinal crush him turn one, you're in, you're in. <laughs> Other yeah. than that, you might be in a heap of trouble. Okay, so just race and just and basically being as clever as possible and using using chain to the most of his ability, creepers and so on and so forth. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, in in a nutshell, it's if they're. Using the hero power on something like a uh, autumn's touch, whatever, take it on the chin. It does not matter. Yeah. Most of the time, you don't care about frostbite as well, so just take that on the chin. Yeah. You can go all the way down to fourteen life with your Karen husk if you want, because they cannot deal you the one point of damage to get it to pop um, mm. without getting, like a big attack. In which point the husk gets in front. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. Okay, so um, let me just quickly revert back to your original state. And um, you... So we talked about Starvo. We'll, tell, we'll stick with the Guardians. Hold him. So there's the Reeks of Corruption uh, still in. Um, oh, oh, the Reek of Corruption. All right, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So that, um, that's probably the end of the Reek Corruption. Is that right? Ooh. Yeah, Matt. Matt, who was also playing this, some was been as like experimented a little bit in other matchups. I'm not a huge fan of it. Yeah, um, he can bring it in in the mirror, but yeah, uh, against Alden, um, I think that the way the Alden matchups it matchup works is that you need to play Eclipse, otherwise you can't win. Yeah. Um But the good thing, is, the good news, however, is when you do play Eclipse, you often win, which is great. Yeah. So we're playing Ether Iron Weave instead of Husk here because our plan is gonna is, is basically that we are going to lose every card in our deck, and if you have Karen Husk in Banish, then that's gonna be bad. Um, so yeah, so you put Aether Iron Weave in. Eclipse is obviously going in. Yeah, Command and Conquers. Yeah. Seeping Shadows. Yeah. Inverts. Uh, one time snap. Yeah. Uh, blue and Hallowed Rights. Yeah. And that's, and I think, that seems about yeah. it. 
seems like most of, the rest of your, most of your decks in there. So okay, let's go through by the uh, time snap. That's a good one. So on your clips turn, um, the huge thing is go again. Uh, most of the time, that's where you're choked. Against Aldim, though, you have to be super careful because things like Blizzard can tax your resources and their hero power can tax your resources if you're not clever. Um, so time snaps there, as part, similar to Seeping Shadows, to get some more action points in there. Okay, and, bro. I mean, I, I mean, I feel like that's quite obvious if you read the time snap card, but yeah. it's, it's there for clips, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Seeping Shadow, same thing, getting, letting it go wide and additional blood debt. Um, Unhallowed Rites, again, Blood Debt, and... Um... Well, Unhallowed Rites is it's that card in particular because putting a Seeping Shadows back on the bottom of your deck or an Unhallowed Rites is really important for the Eclipse turn and the longevity of your deck as well. Yeah. Okay, for real. Um, I mean, so you're... So what's the is it what's the plan against him? Is it just basically to just to keep going and set up your banish zone so that you can get a big turn off to eclipse and then just just endless loop him basically? Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, go put as much pressure on as you can. Pretty much ignore what he's doing. Um, hope to God that they don't play a channel like frigid the turn before you're going to like the seventh <laughs> shot or something because if they do that, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah. Um, um, one big trick um, is that on your go turn, on your eclipse turn, yeah, one of the most annoying things they can do aside from a blizz from Blizzard is they can use their hero power to try and make you put a card on top, so you lose resources. So something that I really try to do is make it so that I have no resources floating and one card in hand when I'm attacking with something. So I'm, I try and clear out as much of my hand as possible. So like picture blue to Seeping Shadows, picture blue to um, Hell from Beyond. You know, try and use that last resource however I can, so that when I'm attacking with my first attack, I've got one card in hand, Yeah. hopefully a blue, they're going to use their hero power probably to make me put it on top. I can pitch it and then invert existence because it's an instant. Yeah, uh, right. My, and get my resources. So, yeah, that's a, that's a huge deal. There you go. Right, that's sick, man. Okay, and then uh, normal Bravo? Uh, normal Bravo is pretty similar. Uh, it depends on how you you have to you have to be pretty careful about um, like keeping an eye on them when they're sideboarding because basically if they present sixty cards and go aggro, you're gonna wish that you haven't gone on the eclipse plan. Right. Uh, if they if you think they're doing that, then you're gonna want husk and you're gonna want to yeah. be a sleek sixty card aggro deck and just beat them, be the better aggro deck. Um, so how do you make that call? You just got to sort of, you just, I'll listen to them. yeah, you just got to try and try and make the call, try and make a good judgment call at the time. Yeah, I mean, hopefully you've got some sort of intel. Some maybe you've seen them play. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe some people are quite lax with how they're sideboarding. They just like slap a lot of cards in and put like two cards back in the deck box, and you're like, okay, this guy's boarding up quite a lot of cards. Um, so yeah, so sometimes you get stung by it, um, and that is what it is. Um, I sideboarded in the Eclipse package against an aggro Bravo and still beat them because you can still do that by being a better aggro deck. I, I hedged by sideboarding as if they were going to be controlling, but I kept Husk um, just in case. They, so you can do that and hedge if you want. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. That's, 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 so, that's, so that's the Guardians, guys. It sounds like Guardians is probably... Out of, is, would you say out of all the classes is the one that can give you the biggest headache? I would... Because I play the deck so much, I would, the Guardian that I would not like to play against is Starvo, because not that I think it's worse than a 50-50 matchup, but um, it's the got the best chance of beating me. Old him, uh, when you first start playing, you'll probably lose because it's easy to play the old him side, and chain has to tread a really fine line uh, but once you've got the hang of it and you know how to eclipse properly it's a pretty good matchup i think uh, mm -hmm. so yeah starvo is the, the worst worst one okay right um let's just move over to um the next the next evil class of the lot is um rune blades themselves so um will chain mirror is it a, chain mirrors generally suck it says historically wasn't isn't the most um fun matchups i don't i'm not going to speak for you but Whoever gets out of war first tends to go get get going. 
Yeah, um, being on the play is really good, getting to make the first shackle. Um, and yeah, how, however your balances go and your draws go is the, the main thing. I mean, obviously, if one player plays a bit loose and a bit poor, then that's going to really hurt. So, yeah, you have, to, you have to play really tight just to squeak as much damage in as you can. Um, you could sideboard in Reek of Corruption to try and, like, uh, get a bit of like value going that way, but I'm not 100% on that. Um, it's certainly not an Eclipse matchup because it's it's absolute aggro. So, yeah. yeah. So if it was against um, a, a, cha a chain mirror, what sideboard cards are you throwing in? Um, Come and Conquers, I think. Um, I'm not like thrilled about them, but um, they, can, they can do the they can do the work. Yeah, and like I knew that Matt because when I played against Matt, my friend playing the same deck, I knew he had fit for scenes. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna bring in some common conquers to try and just just because you can get a little bit of value from if they're trying to block with a defensive reaction, you can attack with that. Yeah. Um, but it's not, it's not ideal into Husk because I'm not 100. percent And Chain doesn't um, Arsenal very often, um, so it's not like it's a huge deal. Uh, you want the inverts? Yeah. Um, inverts, you can do a pretty cool trick I'll with. In there, yeah. Um, so you can do things like. At the end of their turn, when they've used all their resources and whatever, you can invert to put two blood, card, blood deck cards in their blood deck. So they take two damage, and then they'll take whatever damage at the end of the turn. Right, from blood yeah, so once they're done and they think they're cool, you go, no, you can put those two back in. Here's two damage for your triples, and then here's another two damage. So it's basically a four damage turn. Yeah. But you, you've you got to do it very clever because you've basically given them reason, stuff back to fling back at you. So Yeah, that's pretty much a play you would probably try and make just to end the game because yeah like you say it's a, it's a gambit yeah um okay so, scroll up a little bit i can't think of anything else no just the fate for scenes as well because um yeah it's a race so. oh so the rat king uh, on the chat has come up and said rob is your he is your favorite flesh and blood player here you go yeah. oh, do you know nice. do, do you know that do you know the rat king is i do you, you do <laughs> 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 i was gonna say did you pay him <laughs> he says it on every oh, every time I stream on Kingdom Gaming he's, he's saying he's, I'm his favourite player so, oh yeah. fantastic <laughs> there you go Rat King thank you thank you for jumping in anyway so uh, let's move on to um, let's go on to Briar I'm, I'm saving the last the, be the best for Runeblade to last clearly so Briar uh, <laughs> is it one of your friends is it Simon who plays Briar Simon and Dan Tripp played Briar. So Trip played Briar at Kingdom Game in Invite and Simon brought Briar. I think I don't know if Trip came along as well. I think they did in to Nottingham. But no, Dan Trip was at Kingdom Gaming. So I'm gonna have to yeah throw out some mad disrespect and say that we in our, in our testing group we don't really consider it to be like a deck worth playing against, so Oh <laughs> Yeah, like to, to us, it's just a worse chain. Um, so we just didn't really test against it or anything like that. When okay. chain, when Briar was like at its, the height of its power and stuff, I was playing chain against it. And this was like at the same sort of time that chain did well at like US Nationals alongside Briar, I think. Yeah. Um, and I thought the matchup was pretty close. Like their Channel Mount Heroic turns were good, but you having out of one carrying Husk is also really good. So, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so uh, mad disrespect to um, to you, Earth Briars out there, and uh, we'll move on to the uh, better, the best Rune Blade, the King, the OG himself, not being biased, is Viscerai. <laughs> okay, so you're pretty comfortable with the Viscerai matchup, though, aren't you? I am. So I did a lot of testing before Everfest, so yeah. I haven't done very. Very, very much testing into the Swarming Loom Veil, Reverend Runeblood side of things. Mm -hmm. What we found before was that. So I was running a 60 card, really sleek aggro deck against Viscera, who was playing the Runeblood Barriers and nine defense reactions. And okay. Jim was just losing and just running out of cards before he could win. So I was like, right, okay, this, <laughs> this strategy is a problem. So I was like, okay, I'll sideboard playing the, like the Eclipse package, see how that goes. And yeah, that was good. More cards. I've got more long longevity of my deck. But the problem with Viscerai is that he can kill Ursa with one card. So uh, it's in a one card hand or even just in Arsenal. Because you can play Ninth Blade or, uh, you have to help me here, the other six attack. That oh, gets... Amplify the Art Knight. So that either of them can kill Ursa as a one card hand, which is enormous. Because. Yeah, because you just have some. Well, 
I mean, if you're going to knife blade Ursa, I probably would just turn that direction towards you because that's also nine rune chants towards you. But the thing is, in the... to be able to survive long enough, in... so in the... when you play the defensive version of this, and you're doing that plan, you're not really attacking; you're just building up rune chants. Yeah, and just kind of, you're playing to just survive. You're not actually planning to attack. Um, but Okay, so that's that aside. Yeah. With like the newer aggro versions, like when me and you played. Um, yes. You you put out a lot more damage than I've had a bit I put out on one turn. Um, oh well, thank you. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> the, the 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 god draws of um, of uh, Sonata, right? You know, I, I think that's where to me from my testing. Chain is one. It's been it's been historically just a really tricky hero to just get around because. You know, no matter what you're what you're throwing at them, you know they've always got a banish zone and they've always got an art of war. They can always just push it a bit further than pretty much any other runeblade hero can. Um, but at the same time, with uh, a couple of these newer cards that have came out now with Revel and Runeblood and Gloom, um, I think I think there's definitely room now to to actually challenge K Chain. I even think that. Um, the deck that I've brought along wasn't reflecting it, but I even think that Viserae has a good shot of even race and chain. But we'll see. Balls and swords. Yeah. Um, Hopefully. No, rematch. Some, yeah. Some some chains play. What's the name of the arcane barrier gloves that they? The new oh, uh, grasp. Oh, oh, Vex and quill Vex and... hands. And Quillham. So I've noticed some chains have been playing that in the sideboard. Yeah. Um, and I've got to imagine it's because it's only one piece of Farcane Barrier, like it's just for Viserai. I'm not interested in pitching a blue to prevent three damage. I want to it, pitch. That it's blue actually to... got nothing to do with that at all. It's actually no, no, no. It's it's it's, it's absolutely nutty because it's damage at the end of the day. Um, it's because you on a dime. You can just turn around and go, okay, I'm just going to make two rune chants out of nothing. And I think as well, when they run Vexin, they actually also run um, Bloodsheaf Skeletor because they want to turn around whenever they want to and go, I'm just going to pop Vexin Quillhand, I'm going to pop my uh, Skeletor, and then I can just make any non attack action card and attack action card cost nothing. So. You've... You mean from the chain side or from the... On the chain side. Not playing Carrion Husk in... They into... don't. They, they... That is... No, they don't. They just... Well, I, they, they literally just go... I can just make... Like, they don't put in Aether Ironweave. Because the the fact that Aether Ironweave can give you two resources, but with the Vex and Quill Hands um, making uh, a non-attack action card and an attack action card cost, just costs two less, plus it's two damage, is for them just extends it even further. So there's there's and it, there is a, there's a couple of things out there, but yeah, the, apparently Vex and Quill Hands for most Runebone players now is uh, Grasp. Grasp is dead. Um, uh, uh, sorry, Not totally um... dead. It's a block two. It has to be used, but it's a sideboard card straight up. Yeah, I'm, I might be on the wrong side of history, but I'm I'm definitely not on that hey, side. Yeah, yeah, well, no, you, I think it's I think it's something maybe it's it, something to consider. But yeah, um, with Vex and Quillhand as well, I think that's also just turned Viserai into like, when we're doing these matchups. You know, when when I played against you, it was like Mordred Tide, play this, then Vex and Quillhand for three more, then read the runes for another six, and all of a sudden I'm sitting on eleven to twelve rune chance in one turn and you're like okay and it, that is those sort of turns that can sort of get out of hand but mm. i think there's more to be had said between the two matchups but that's because i've been obviously playing a lot of this right um but for you currently right now it's something you're kind of comfortable with at the minute yeah like there's there's a few things going on really because it's stuff like the extra sideboard slot because obviously I'm going to want to grasp against other things. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, like the gain three life um, part of grasp because if you play the quill hand and pop it, obviously you're not going to be able to block with it and things. It doesn't even have blade break actually, does it? It has that in barrier. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Well, who needs blocking when you can kill him? 
<laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's the so the Visceral matchup is uh, very sleek. It's basically you putting in the cards are going to help be really sleek and help um, pressure the, the game forward. Basically, I think it's just yeah. I think in the sideboard it's just the inverts that come in. Um, yeah, just because it's it's a blue with, blue card with blood debt, uh, mm -hmm. blue card with blood debt that can actually pretty consistently shoot them for some damage, and actually it can screw over your rattle bones as well. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's that, I've had that done to me once. Well, I'm about to go, and they go, "All right, well, you can chuck that away." I'm like, "Nah." It'll be good actually if you can uh, invert existence there, gloom. You know, that's that's always the target they're going for. Right. Okay. So um, we're gonna re we'll run through Prism. Actually, that's gonna be the next um, boogeyman of the whole uh, meta. So, what's your plan against her? So time snaps coming in. Of course. Uh, and the Command and Conquers, they're the 100% cards. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And actually now I've started to bring in uh, the Inverts as well because... Well, so it depends on the, which way you want to play it because I think the best way... The best chance Prism has got in the matchup has, is going aggro. Like, if they try and just keep you out and be defensive and run you out of cards, assuming you've sideboarded in... I mean, even if you haven't cybered in the Eclipse package, I think you generally just be just kill them anyway. Mm -hmm. um, you, you always cybered up on cards, you don't take anything out. Um, but like, so when I when I was, if I bring in Eclipse, depending on how I think they're going to play, um, I'm going to want invert existences no matter what. Mm -hmm. And initially I was only bringing in one, but the new versions of Prism play these blues that are actually non-attack actions, because previously Prism didn't play any non-attack actions, so invert would always miss. Um, so now they're actually playing them, like it's improved the matchup in that regard. Um, All right, yeah, okay. What so other tech action cards are they playing? It's there's there's two blues. There's one that says you first maybe in more blues. There's it's it's an aura that says like your first attack each turn gets plus two, and there's another one that says your first attack with an aura gets a plus one counter. I think there's another blue that says something like. Your first phantasm card loses. Oh, phantasm. the blue ones. Are they? Are they? They're, oh, they're not instant. Of course, they're not instances. They're actions. So there you go. Yeah. That, thank you, yeah. chunks. The new auras. I like it. You are delayed, <laughs> and somehow we both triggered at the twigged it at the same time. That's how delayed I am figuring this out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that so that goes for them. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And. Like initially, I was bringing one in just to play, just to be a blood deck card for Eclipse. But now I actually have targets. Um, so I think there's two ways you can lose this matchup. The first is them going aggro and you not having, um, say, like they attack you for six with the Herald that's actually playing from Banish. Oh, um, judgment. Yeah, and then you go, okay, I'll husk that, sure. And then they come in with the dominate one, and you're like, Erudition, ah, yeah. Can't block this and. That ends up being a bad time. Um, so you could lose that way to the aggro plan, um, which I think is. I think obviously I think I still think uh, chains favoured. And the other way is the, the other auras. Way so I don't think you generally lose to the auras. Like popping them is just so easy for chain. Um, yeah. So yeah. So, so how come? So when, when they've got like two out, two or three out, and that's not difficult nowadays with the the ways that they can just keep, you know. They can start their turn off and just going right. We're going to put one down. Like you know, do you know what I mean? They they can get two out in the turn fairly easily now. So how do you deal with that? With no other way apart from you, you, it's only time snap potion. So I every single turn um, when I'm I'm attacking them and then I'm finishing my turn by going and thorn to kill an aura okay. and thorn. So every single turn that they have. Um, two in play, I'm going to be doing that. Depending sometimes on how the game's going, I might kill the one that they've got, depending on which one it is. Genesis, that can go away straight away when you're yeah. not having a Genesis ever. Um, the ones like Parable and stuff like that, they, that can go away straight away. Um, ALS is the the name of the game, really. You need to play around at Light Sentinel. There is a, um, a piece of technology in the well, it's in like a way to play uh, by prism that i've not seen any prism do and oh they... what there's a there's a there's a there's a thing called a way to play prism no as in against chain the prism no. chain match there's something that prisms can do that i've not seen any prism do and i'm not going to say what it is 
because Ooh. I want to keep being... Yeah, of course. Keep it to yourself. I want to keep beating prisms. And I don't know if it's just something that the better players will do or not. So, for example, um, the guy who won Southampton maybe knows what to do in this situation, but... Yeah, <laughs> so hopefully that, that whatever I'm talking about doesn't uh, become common knowledge because that's I think a pretty big deal in the matchup. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. So well, Jack, Ra Jack Raven, the Aura Boys are here. Parable OP into chain. My feet at OP. My feet at OP into chain. Okay, so Jack Raven, uh, you must know what this uh, amazing line of play is. That is um, chain chain. Or is it everyone's nightmare? Just into chain. Okay, cool. All right. yeah. I'm not bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I think chain could probably. Well, if it, anyway, we'll move on. So, the um, so the auras um, are not that much of a big deal for you currently at the minute because people at the minute in you know, all your games aren't doing the thing that you're worried about. Yeah, and you actually have times that potion in a lot of decks so that decks like katsu and uh, katsu plays times that potion pretty well actually because a lot of things of, it, of his have go again but mm -hmm. times that potion with some uh heroes is a bit awkward because you have to like give up doing something and sometimes you do in chain but the really good thing is that chains making a shackle can give rosetta thorn go again so you can do something like mouth skies bounding demigon shackle thorn and then time snap potion once you've got that time slap person in play, the game oh, yeah, is yeah. just a million times easier. Yeah, yeah you're, lo you're locked in, aren't you? You know, easy time. So Jack Raven says he actually does not know what you're on about. And he assumes it's the feet. Something about the feet? I don't know. Well, nope, nothing to do with equipment, no. Nothing to do with equipment, guys. Well, go, but, and run, go and run and figure it out. Go and run and figure it out. Anyway, so Prism, relatively fine with all that, yeah? Yeah, I'm happy to be paired into Prism every round, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I know the feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Prism players. Right, so... Um, I think it's... How long have we been going on for? We're almost going, going on for an hour. Um, so, I'm going to go through some slightly honourable mentions. Um, <laughs> I feel bad about that. <laughs> honourable mentions from the rest of the heroes. Have you tested into Warrior? God. Yeah, um, well, by the look of that, it's probably um, who are they again? Against <laughs> Bolton um, at the weekend. Um, yeah. Dorinthia, I don't think I've ever played against in CC. I think I've only played it in Blitz. Yeah, um, okay. Brutes, Reinar, Levia. Never played against Levia in CC. Reinar, I've only played against once. Against, I think you probably know the gentleman. Um, he's the re really tall guy. Oh, Chunks. And he's here, baby. He's in He's oh, in the it. chat. Yeah, so, Chunks. Yeah. I played against Chunks, and obviously, really great guy to play against, and it's it's really nice when he rolls ones on the scout things as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that might help. But, yeah, yeah, he did that against me. So, that's yeah, I haven't really played against Ryan very much, to be honest. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, Dash. Again, haven't really played against it very much. Um, someone okay. messaged me today about doing some testing with it, so maybe I'll do some of that. Um, but yeah, like Dash is a control deck, isn't it? And yes. I don't, again, I don't think they can keep you out. Yeah, no. Is the thing, the thing is, I think there is a Dash deck out there. There is a Dash deck out there. I think people do this straight up thing where they just don't really try. They run to the new thing, right? So Starvo is a new thing, you know, and now, you know, you've got Chain is actually pulling ahead on a few things. I can now see people go, oh, maybe it's Chain. Chain's the way. And Prism's doing well. Oh, Prism. Prism's the way. And if you actually probably sit down and have a look at what Dash has got, you know, the um, the cards, the Signal Jammer, saying that you can only play one non-attack action card this turn, is going to probably jam up a lot more than you think. Because it really does a lot, a number on Viscerai. And as well, just trying to stop in uh, Chain being able to, for you know, getting that Captain's Call off after a after a Shadow Puppetry, or, you know, when you're getting, you play Belittle to get a Minoism and can't play a Minoism, and how beyond, you know, all these extra stuff that Chain wants to just generate into. And then you just whack that down and you go, ugh. You know what I mean? It's it's, yeah. an, it's an absolute faff, and then with the other one, the 
just the, 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 the one that says if you take exactly one damage, it stops. It turns you three blocks into four blocks, and chain usually comes in with four. So if you can just go, cool, block for three, takes, but you know, just all of that stuff just actually tends to add up. And then you just go, pew, 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 shoot with the pistol. Just take your time. <laughs> so I don't think anyone's really given Dash a proper shot. I reckon, would, as per usual, a ProQuest season will show up. Someone's given it a go. It's really good. And then people will then go, oh, finally, you can give this a go. So give it a go, guys. I think that Dash is, I think Dash is massively unrepresented at the minute. Um, and I'm trying to think who else is there. Christ, I feel awful. Wizard? Um, not played against it in CC, which I think is actually good because I, I, my friend Matt lost to it and it could actually be a bad It is a problem. If you don't have any null rune, <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah, um, I played against an Azalea. Um, oh, the Rangers, and... yes. Okay, go. Yeah, Azalea, go. <laughs> so, yeah, Red and Ledger is a hell of a card, obviously. I mean, that's yeah. like the best thing Azalea has really got. Um, mm -hmm. And giving it Dominate is a pain. Um, so like, that's really good. And apart from that, it's okay. So just as long as they can't do too many stringing of that along, um, Ice Lexi can be a problem, um, yeah, because taxation effects and things like that, just trying to stop you getting things out of your blood debt, and that can be a really big problem. They're really good at keeping Child Link Frigid in play because of three of a kind. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would probably prefer not to play against Ice Lexi, to be honest, but yeah. And have you played up against any Lightning Lexi? Um... I think before Ball Lightning got banned, um, I think with that card going, I think it's too much. I think I think they struggle now. That card's gone. Um, yeah. 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 But fair enough. Christ, sorry. I, I, this is where the rest. This is where everyone else just comes in and goes. But what about me? And I go, I'm really sorry. There's so many <laughs> heroes now. I can't. I cannot keep up. But the meta is basically the pillars are illusionists, the guardians. And the rune blades and when you're testing into them you know you've got some hot heroes that you're just trying to keep on top of everyone else these are what you know to be honest this is where people need to sort of consider that these other heroes that maybe people just don't trial and test into much there is something that no one's figured out they usually win they can usually win a tournament especially when no one's got it sussed or planned and you're actually battering them sideways so oh no we did mention dorinthia rat king uh Maybe those axes are a problem. Who knows? <laughs> I've played against Katsu as well. My girlfriend plays Oh, God, Katsu. yeah, the Katsus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think generally they just come up a little bit short because mm. um, I think the armor from Chain just buys them the time that they yeah. need to be able to pull ahead. Um, but there's always a chance if they, you know, if they go super wide and draw the cards at the right time. So, yeah. And they're giving you a Rika Corruption, which is just like, oh, great. Thank you. That's the last, that's like the worst card for Katsu to see. So, yeah, there you go. Right, Rob, I believe I've taken up more of the time than I thought, basically. It's, it's been, it's been awesome. Uh, is there any sort of um, little bits that you want to, to add in this that I haven't mentioned? Um... No, I don't think so. Um, I guess if anybody sees me in Procrests, don't be yeah too sour about me. Just there for the gold foil. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to hopefully a rematch. Although when you did say, "Oh, I'm only going to go to one this weekend," I was like, ah. "Yeah, let me guess, you're going to go to Boards and Swords, aren't you?" And just go, "Oh, hi Hamish, I've just come to pull you away from that Pro Tour again." You know, sorry. <laughs> You know, I actually that you when I work, think about it, uh, the game loss I had with you at Kingdom Gaming was was the winning in for me. Right. When you worked it because I won the last two games and came twelfth, so that game was the if I don't win this, I ain't in. So, thank you. <laughs> no, that's the way it goes, man. Actually, again, I said this at the start of the stream. It was an absolutely fantastic game. Um, where I believe that it was just literally just two people playing the deck the best the best it could be basically and it ended up being an incredibly tight game where both of us won single digit healths and it's you know it's that back and forth that you want Russian blood to play not this 
Starvo you for 12 and then Starvo you for another 11 and you're like oh okay I guess there's nothing I can do <laughs> I just yeah. I just take it to the face so yeah I think it'll it's a shame that the problem is the hero because when the problem is stuff like Briar and they can go well let's take away a ball lightning plunder run they can actually you know people can still play, play Briar like Simon and um, your other friend I can't remember his name yeah Dan Trip. um what with like Bravo, like what do you really do? Like, I don't really, I don't know the answer. So yeah. Well, they did errata Briar's card. Yeah, I suppose they could do. Yeah, it's, it, it's a shame for all the cold foil ones and stuff, isn't it? Well, you know, it's the way it's the way it goes, isn't it? But I, I, I think actually, personally, if they turn around and just said, Oakenold is, which I don't know why he isn't. I don't know why Oakenold isn't just an Oldham card. Yeah. If they just turn around and said, yeah, Oakenold is an Oldham specialisation, I reckon the deck would just go, Ugh. not rubbish, but just takes the edge off. Yeah, I also think it sh they should maybe errata the ability so that pulses don't work like they do, like they count for both. That's I think that's really dumb. Oh, um, yeah, especially when you have ca pulse of candle hold in your hand and you're like, okay, guess I'm fusing every turn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so anyway, Rob. Thank you so much for uh, jumping on and have a chat. And um, yeah, I hope, I hope to catch you later um, in a test game or two in the future and in future events. Awesome. Thanks for having me. No, we're awesome. Thank you.